let's get into it hit that subscribe button coach calling here sold not for sale podcast we got joe rogan andrew schultz and andrew schultz brings out a little bit in rogan when they're talking about the whole diddy situation joe rogan has shied away from talking about this but andrew schultz somehow brings a little bit out of him and joe rogan actually admits to hearing stories about what used to happen at these parties that diddy would have which is very interesting. I wish I could know who told him this. I re I really wish I could know who, who filled him in on this. So I'm going to be showing you about three clips from Rogan just detailing that situation. And they're also talking about whether or not he's actually going to go down and get arrested and all that stuff. Then we're going to move on to Patrick Bet David with Jesse Waters. They actually talk about it because if you don't know, Jesse Waters has been covering this very extensively. So they're asking the question as well. Do you think he's going down? What's really going on with the situation? Then we got closing remarks with Jesse Waters. He has something big to say. And then it moves on to me talking about something that Kanye West said that connects directly to what Jesse is alleging is going on with Diddy. Very, very interesting stuff. Let's get right into it. Don't forget about the new channel I got, Coach Call in Media. We got a whole bunch of videos on there, whole bunch that we've recorded. We're doing like two to four videos on that channel a day. We're breaking away from the Rogan content on that channel, so hit that subscribe button on both channels if you haven't already. Let's move on to the Joe Rogan clip. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start here. Okay, so um, he came on and... Way too fast, of course, you know me. You know me, I like everybody to sound like Ben Shapiro. Let's go. He was very, like, fourth... First of all, he's very charming, but, like, when you're talking to anybody who's worked for the CIA, you're looking at him through the same lens as you look at, like, a therapist. Right. Where it's like, wait, are you analyzing? Like, what's right. going what's on? what's going on here? Very charming, very smart, very, like, seems to really know what's going on in the world, but, like, straight up told us, he's like, yeah, the CIA, you know, I guess one of the advantages I have is, like, I'm pretty close to a uh, sociopath. Like, I'm not there, but, like, I don't, I don't feel the same emotions that everybody feels. There's like a lack of guilt, but I know when I should feel it in these moments. Whoa. But that's a huge advantage. Imagine if you're trying to like find assets and flip assets. Yeah. If you and I like build a relationship with somebody and we like feel empathy for them, right? maybe we wouldn't be able to say, hey, now it's time for you to cough up the information or else. Right. But somebody else in that position might. So I would imagine if you were at the fucking CIA, you're like, okay, we're looking for people who have gone through these things in their life that, that have curated this kind of like personality type. Well. Isn't it just like part of the gig? Like here, here's a for instance, like your bit about Puffy. <laughs> How you're gonna connect these two fucking dots? <laughs> you, that bit is like, look, you don't have any real personal beef with Diddy, mm -mm. but it's got to go down. The, the the bits are there. I'm a gold miner. I just found some gold. You're right. Maybe I'm a sociopath. It's not that you're a sociopath. It's just that that's part of the gig. Yes. Like you're not a sociopath with your friends. No, I think I'm maybe. An empath. Yes. But I guess it's one of those things where, like, you justify, you go, okay, if there's, a, I think this person might have done something bad. Yes. And he can get jokes, and we're all going to tell jokes. Yeah. I'm not pressing fucking charges. Well, not only that, you're not the guy who's out there, like, calling the New York Times, hey, you know what I heard about By Diddy? The way, yeah. 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 Exactly. You're just yeah. like, it's there. I yes, mean, it's yes, not just yes, there. Yes, yes. It's everywhere. My fucking news feed is dominated by it. Yes. Fox News, CNN, yeah, yeah. everyone. There's raids at Diddy's house. Yeah, yeah. Who was the guy the that was running around with a sports bra on? Did you see that one dude? No, this is in LA. Oh my God, I gotta send Wait, you while this. While the yeah. raids are happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got caught up in the raid and he was yelling, I'm a celebrity, I'm a celebrity. <laughs> it was like, like one of the most hilarious clips. Hold on, I'm gonna find yeah. you this. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about, Jamie? Nope. But you bring up a good point, which is like, <laughs> are there ever situations where you feel you won't? <laughs> Wait till you see this. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing a sports bra. Hold on, I'm going to play it. Oh, okay. Yeah, put your headphones on so you can hear it. Saucy <laughs> Santana. <sighs> oh, yeah, saucy. Look, look at this. Wearing what appears to be a black sports bra, red tights, and the performer's signature trim beard and long eyelashes. Yeah, this is Joe. This is Saucy the Santana. Was yeah, look at him. Look at him. Oh wow! <laughs> Saliva on the beard is crazy. <laughs> Saliva on the beard. He definitely came from a Diddy party. Yeah. Well, he was at Diddy's house. I bet he was. So I guess Diddy just kept people at his houses because he's got Listen. multiple houses and he's just had freak out part. Look at him. Look at him, Saucy yeah. Santana. Go Saucy. Yeah, yeah. No, Saucy's crazy. Have you Go seen Saucy, Saucy twerk? I didn't even know Saucy existed until I saw that video. Oh, Saucy can throw it down. This is booty by Saucy. 
Okay, so I can't show you this because it's a music video, okay? But here's what I'm going to do for you instead. I'm going to show you Saucy Santana. This person was at Diddy's house. Now, you know, you can't make any assumptions about anybody, but I'm just saying this is very, very interesting that this person was at Diddy's house. Diddy wasn't there. He's talking about all these freak out parties. If anybody is willing to get freaky, it's going to be this gentleman or they, them, whatever this person identifies as. You can't you can't even tell, you know, the beard, but the eyelashes are feminine, long nails. It's, ve it's a very, very interesting person. But uh, these are the type of characters Diddy had at his place. So I'm just going to skip over this music video and believe you me, you don't want to see this music video. Okay. Unless that's your thing, you don't want to see this music video. Let's get back to the video. Of the year? <laughs> yeah, I think it's over. You think it's over? I think it's over for him as like a uh, a figure in entertainment. Right. But do you like, think it's over as him as far as jail? Like he gets a cell right next to R. Kelly? I don't think so. I don't think really? he gets locked up. I think he skates. Up. I think he skates. Or he goes really? to like Bali. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a move, huh? I mean, Russell's out there. <laughs> yeah. You know. Is is he been formally charged or does he just know that the shit is out there? I think there's just so much shit out there. <clears throat> but I think those rappers did some wild shit. It's yeah, I mean, it was Especially you know, in the 90s. Music business. It's a lot of people. It's not just the music business. It's like it's the extortion business. Well, that's yeah, I mean, the, the rap game was crazy. That's a lot of thing a lot of people don't realize is like back in the day, especially like early rap game, you weren't just going to play at you know, what's the, the random theater that you would play in L.A.? What's like a right. big theater? I'm trying to think. The Orpheum or something like that. Wiltern. The Wiltern. Some guys were explaining to me, he was like, you would play at the local hood club. There was like a hood club that you could perform at. And then that was owned by the local drug dealer that was washing money there. Right. So this is where the idea of like checking in comes from. Have you heard of this term? Yes. Like checking in was basically like, hey, I want to make sure we're good because you're going to pay me. And if I don't check in, you might rob me because you're putting me up at the hotel and you know everything that's going on, and mm -hmm. you're a drug dealer, so right. you don't play by the rules. Right, when you come to Houston, you're checking in with certain people. Mr. Prince. Yes, sir. Mr. Prince. Yeah. You don't gotta check in, Joe. You gotta check in, say Joe hi. Joe don't gotta check well, in. I'm not in the, that business. I say <laughs> hi. <laughs> You've had him on here, right? Yeah, yeah. He's a legend in the He's game, He's a dude. legend. Out of respect, I say hi. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So what is like, yeah, yeah. How, how does a guy like him, like I'm trying to think, like how do you, how do you navigate that to the point where People have this like respect and fear because of what they assume you've done in the street world. Right. But you're also operating legitimately. Yeah. And nobody can get you. They like, try. They try. Well, nonstop. they tried with him many times. And do you think they just give up? I don't think they have anything. If they had something, <laughs> they would have brought it. You know, if they have something on a guy like that, they try to get him. That's the thing. But with, he's yeah. clever. Oh. He's he's a uh, he's playing many levels. He's like one of those dudes. You ever see a chess tournament where a guy walks in and there's ten different players and he just walks and goes to each move, and goes to the next board and makes a move, goes to the next board, makes a move, and he yeah. beats everybody. Yeah, yeah. So where, where does a guy like that learn that? That's what I'm trying to understand. Streets, streets. Yeah, yeah. He, he learns that. You know, I mean, it's all about keeping people close. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. Giving respect, getting respect. Yeah. Making sure that you know. You cover all your statements. Yeah, like if you say something, you have to make sure you do it. You cover it. Now, they're talking about Jay Prince. Jay Prince is nothing like Diddy. Um, I just let the clip run a little long. But I do find it weird that Rogan's talking about checking in. Checking in is a, a very much a black gangster thing to do. If you're just a civilian, you do not have to check in at all. Period. Black or white. You don't have to just check in just because. He's saying he goes and says, says hi out of respect. I find that so weird. So odd. Why are you saying hi to this guy who's known to be, you know, for lack of a better term, he's known to be a gangster, like an old school gangster, not like the gangsters of today that are like drug addicts and stuff. The fact that he goes and says hi is a very odd thing to do. They also talked about Russell Simmons. If you don't know, Russell Simmons started Def Jam, one of the biggest and first hip hop record labels in existence. Um, it's kind of died down since, but apparently he's in Bali. There's some charges pending there of the sexual nature, and he has just stayed in Bali for years. He's never come back to the U.S. Everybody speculates that he's running away from those charges and that they can't get him while he's in Bali. Nobody knows for sure, though. But for someone who's American to never come back to America, just as that happened, a little weird. Let's get back to the next clip about Diddy. Oh, let's make sure the mute's off. There you go.
when the D when the when the feds rolled up, you know, with the fucking Hummers and shit, they were like, it wasn't about Diddy. It was about if there were tapes of powerful people there. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. They were the ones that called. They're like, I need to protect myself. So go in there with all the things and rip any tapes or any evidence. Well, Prince Harry was hanging with Diddy. I mean, everybody hung with Diddy. That's the other tricky yeah, thing. Like, Diddy hung out with everybody. And I've spoken to a bunch of people who are like, yo, great dude. Like, always there for you. Never asked for a single thing. To one in the morning. And then, the then freak off. Everybody the says, get out of the house. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like the gremlins start eating after <laughs> midnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody who tells the story is like, I saw I go upstairs and these dudes are fucking yeah. like right on the couch. Yeah. And then I go in this room and these guys are fucking. And it's yeah. like, and pros. Like, apparently he was getting male gigolos to fuck girls. To that, fuck girls? Yeah, that's the, that was one of the rumors. Like, the male freak gigolos. off. So he would hire the professional dicks. To <laughs> so let's move on to the next clip. More importantly, it's more about Diddy. But yes, that is one of the allegations as well. Very weird allegation. But here's the thing with that. Why does Joe know that? Who is the person? Joe's like everyone who tells the stories. Who are these people that Joe knows that tell the stories? The only one I can think of maybe would be Cat Williams. Because if you don't know, Cat Williams, pretty much his cancellation started after he chose to talk about what he saw in Diddy's house. He did a bit about it. He did it in a special. Everybody knows about it. He said he went to one room, saw two guys kissing, blah, blah, blah. And after that, his career started getting attacked. It didn't go downhill because he's Cat Williams, but he did start getting attacked after that in the media. So it's very interesting. And he actually named the two people that he saw. So it was interesting. And they were from the black community, of course. Very interesting stuff, man. Let's go to the last clip. Joe Rogan and Andrew Schultz touching on the allegations between Diddy and a rapper named Meek Mills. Now, Diddy was named as having relations with a rapper from Philadelphia and an R&B singer. A lot of people speculate that that was Usher and Meek Mills because of various clips that have been seen. Well, Usher actually stayed with Diddy when he was a kid for quite some time, and that's where that speculation comes from. Meek Mills is a rapper from Philadelphia. On top of that, he's actually spent a lot of time with Diddy. And again, didn't record any songs, which is always very odd when you're in the music industry. Let's get to this last. Imagine him walking out on the show, <laughs> petting a fucking cat. So do you, what do you think was going on? With who? Meek, with, Meek and Diddy? I don't think any, I don't think Meek's gay. I don't think anything's happened with them. I think that was just like a funny rumor that happened. I right. even said it's that fun. when I first did the Meek joke. I was like, I don't think he's gay. He just handled the accusations poorly. Yes. Like, he just handled yeah, them he poorly. he said, I love pussy. Which who is does like, that? That's the gayest thing. Yeah, it seems yeah. gay. But I don't think yeah. he's gay. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But, but that's just an unsophisticated approach to PR. Yeah. Like, his yeah. PR team's probably like, hey, maybe don't You've say that. you got to do something. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? I mean, he's probably not consulting with anybody. Yeah. If I had a guess, nobody That's consults with you when something happens. You just post whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have like a team yeah. telling me, <laughs> don't say that before the podcast. <laughs> that would be a problem. Yeah, it would be. It would yeah, be. I would yeah. have never gotten anywhere. Yes. Yeah, yeah. we need you to not have a yeah. team, actually. Yeah, it's actually kind of important. You yeah. have a bunch of people you consult with about what could be dangerous. Because then who, who who controls them? What are their intentions? Yeah, exactly. And what are they what are they doing this based on? Mm -hmm. You know, self-preservation? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's just wild that apparently he had cameras in every room of his house. That's what they're saying. Has that been verified? I don't think it's been verified. I think like the Epstein shit, it never will be. Now, I'm not saying that he's like Epstein. Uh, you know, I think that he could have some fucking wild parties, et cetera. But he's, if he was filming everybody. If dudes, he's filming everybody, I understand why Hummer showed up to the house. Because people yeah. who went to the parties were like, get those fucking things. Hundreds of hidden cameras discovered in Diddy's homes, lawsuit says. Oh, well then, it's yeah, it's a wrap. Done. Hundreds. Yeah, you, we'll never see any of that footage. This dude had hundreds of cameras. That is so crazy. Because if he's doing wild shit. A court filing, Jones said he worked with Combs between September 22nd and uh, uh, to September of 2022 and September of 2023 to produce the rapper's most recent release. So he said hundreds of cameras in his homes in L.A., New York, and Miami. And did he like to throw the parties? Like, he would throw the white party. He'd do, you know. But, but who's he have taking care of that footage? I mean, you know, you can get people. Wow. You know, powerful dude. Very powerful dude. Interesting, interesting story. More terrifying than interesting, actually, I would say. But uh, let's get into the the nitty gritty of this. We got Patrick Bet David, Jesse Waters. They're talking about this as well. Then I'm going to show you a little bit with Meek Mills. I definitely should be showing you guys that. I'll try and pull that up right now. Now, what he's talking about, again, it's the rapper from Philadelphia. 
they spent a lot of time together then the records say that he was with someone <laughs> my first search on youtube it says did he <laughs> Just to show you the thumbnail alone, right? It says wearing matching outfits, <laughs> enjoying their bromance, and it's from four years ago. It's not like people are trying to play up the hype. This is from four years ago. So this is the type of stuff that people are looking at being like something was going on with these two. So just to say that, let's move on to the Patrick Bed David stuff. Supporters of him. So they're kind of like saying yeah. there's something going on that you guys are not seeing, right? It's another thing that you got to consider. What do you what do you what do you know about? I've that seen part? litigation between those two, and there's a racial charge there as well. And if they've settled, and I also heard Diddy double cross them, so I don't really know what's going on at that level. But I do know that I, you said you don't think Diddy's going down. I, I have. I, for, I, I, I disagree. And why do you? Why and, do you I, think and, that? I, and I and I think if you have the feds go in there and seize everything in the house, mm -hmm. phones, electronics, video cameras, and he has multiple civil suits in play, do you think Universal Records is going to take the fall? Well, well, I don't think Universal Records is going to. Do you take think the fall. lesser players are? Because just think about it, the day that they I raided, do. he he wasn't there, and his jet flew with God knows what, he wasn't on it, to a, a place that doesn't have any U.S. extradition. Maybe all the tapes and all everything, that was just like a, a delivery method. Because why else is he dancing and having a great time in the streets? He that's, can't, he's not delusional. Because it's great PR. Yep. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Exactly. Here's a question for all yeah. of you guys. Here's a question for all And But Rob, can you run a poll on this? Mm -hmm. Who was more powerful and feared? Uh, Harvey Weinstein or Diddy? Put the poll. I'm curious to know what the audience will I, say. I, Again, I, oh. hear me out. It's a very important question. Okay, think about this one before, before we answer it. Process Go it. Ahead. Harvey Weinstein. Yep. One of the top four Godfathers, Hollywood control, huge, all huge. of that stuff, the amount of power he had. And he was not yep. a visible guy. He's a behind the closed door guy. Yep. Clinton's presidents, all that stuff. Or did he music, hip hop? Links of Biggie's death, Tupac's death, you know, what he's done with all these girls, J-Lo, all these names that are tied to him. Who is a bigger man to fall? I, to, to fall, you said to fear. Mean, no, no, fear and fall, meaning like which one can that industry not afford to fall that they have to protect? I think Diddy because of all the, the cause Weinstein was- Diddy over Weinstein? Because I, I think Weinstein was my movies and that, but Diddy now we're seeing was politics, Presidents, musicians, uh, uh, elites. Uh, I, I think Diddy. I don't think, I think it's close. I think it's Weinstein, man. This guy, yeah, I, Hollywood, he bro. What do you think? think? The fear is. Think? I think there's the a big difference in Hollywood. But did he have, any, did he have anybody records. murdered? Did he have anybody I, killed? I, did Diddy allegedly had not only two guys but murdered, you know, he's shooting you know, people. You too. know what the purpose of this question is? Who is more untouchable? Weinstein well, Hollywood. or Diddy? Well, obviously, I, 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 yeah, I thought Weinstein was untouchable until he wasn't. Yeah, that's the exactly. point. Yeah. So the point he's making when he's asking you the question to say, "Do you really think he's not going to go down and he's protected?" And he said, "Yes, he is protected." Okay, I had Bernard Carrick at the house. We're having lunch yesterday or two days ago, yep. right? Bernie and Party. and so I said, so. In New York, for the longest time, when you watch these movies, right, mobster, great movie, the old mobster movie where it's the story of Lucky and yep. Meyer Lansky and Frank and Ben Siegel and all this stuff. Phenom if you want to know the history of mob, that's the movie to watch. Yep. A beautiful movie uh, filled with a lot of facts uh, on what happened. Nobody ever thought that the mob was going to fall. Nobody ever thought. They thought they were the untouchables. There's a movie, I think, called... The Untouchables, yeah, right? Yeah, or Chicago, show that was called the, un well, the movie Untouchables. Kevin yeah, Costner, right? Yeah. So, and then the day the two hundred and forty whatever guys are walking out like this yeah. and just going on saying, "Wait a minute, oh, man. how many judges did they have? How many cops did they pay off? Oh, how many guys in politics did they have?" And nobody thought anything was going to happen to them. Do you think something like that? It's about to happen where you see a bunch of these music industry Hollywood moguls coming out like that. Like you think it's going to be that ugly? You think it's going to be more like? Because look, Harvey Weinstein. Have you seen his latest pictures? What he looks like? He's, he went from the powerful guy, yeah. you know, sitting there like this oh, and yeah. having hard wheelchair. That demon. What do you think? I I think that you're never going to see a guy like Universal Records CEO or a Motown Records CEO go down. Those guys are executives. They're well connected. They're going to make Diddy take the fall. And you think so? Because there can always be another Diddy. Someone else will pop up and do the same thing. This was a widespread operation. It was a racketeering conspiracy where these record companies would then sponsor these parties, 
hand Diddy loads of cash that mm -hmm. he used for the drugs, the trafficking, and this was all videotaped, and then they would profit from these young people that came up in the business that were at these parties. They took them to the studios, they signed them to labels, and then they, they used them to make money. And this, this was a grand scheme. If the feds want to go all the way up the food chain on it, they can go as high as they want. But something tells me they're going to suppress it and have one guy take the fall. Do, do you I, guys think, do you guys, sorry, Tom, do, do you guys think that he got, which one's more like, like more probable? Him going to jail and getting in trouble for it or something, God forbid, happening where he kills Epstein's himself? I don't know, man. I have no idea when it comes to that part of it. Now, some things that they ask that I would ask to you, who do you think is more powerful? Harvey or Diddy? I think... I think Harvey might have had the ability to be more powerful because he would like the way that Jesse Waters said, oh, he's in the, these are executives. Harvey was a straight up executive. He was walking into rooms and telling executives what to do. He would decide who's going to be who's going to be the next movie star. Not just that. When you have control over movies, you have control over narrative. You have control over what the public is going to see. You know, if he did a war movie that would that would almost go as a historical event because it would mold people's opinion towards whatever war or whatever issue it was. So he had a lot, he had the ability to have a lot of control. Diddy has some of that too, where if he decides to sign these six artists and all of them are talking about depravity, well then the public, black community, lower class, middle class, people who love hip hop, they're all gonna be exposed to depravity. And that's going to have effects on society as well. And it's going to mold public opinion into towards what's acceptable and what's not. Here's the thing, though. It seemed like Harvey was just on his own. He just he was just like, hey, you come over and that's it. As far as Harvey wasn't filming, he didn't care about any of that stuff. He just wanted his own self taken care of. That's it. And he just wanted the most beautiful, incredible people in the world to do it. And that's what he got off on. Whereas... Diddy, again, there's, you know, all these allegations and everything's alleged. It's just all of these things, the filming, the, the, the having people take care of him, watching certain acts, like all this weird stuff. I, I think Harvey had the ability to be more powerful, but I think Diddy was using what power he had more than Harvey was, if that makes sense. I think Harvey could have easily been like i want you two to do whatever and then film them and then be like here here you go so instead of you getting 30 million dollars for this movie you're gonna take six and you're gonna be good with that you understand he could have done that but it didn't seem like he was doing that it seemed like he had a very simple transaction of come to this hotel room when you leave it will be announced that you are the new starlet or you know action star or whatever you know i didn't delve too deep into his stuff so that's just what I think in terms of that. Who's more powerful? Uh, and then dancing in the streets. If you didn't know, the most recent footage of Diddy was him dancing in the streets, apparently. Not in the streets. Not like a maniac, but I think he was at a port. Uh, a port, and he seemed like he was in very good spirits after charges. He seemed like he was in very good spirits, and everybody was like, why is this guy so happy? You know, people were really trying to figure it out. Here, let me show you this real quick. So it's right here. So apparently this is Diddy and he's dancing. And people are just like, why is he dancing? Why is he so happy? You know, like who would be happy in this situation? They're wondering what news did he get? that he's feeling this way seems like he's smoking a cigar or something like that he's just having a good old time I don't, I don't know i really i really don't know why he would be like this but at the same time you know maybe he's just like i better live it up who knows what's going to happen next you know so that's what they're talking about in regards to that now closing remarks from jesse waters this actually links up perfectly to something that Kanye West said a long time ago when everybody was calling him crazy and hateful. So let's play this. Your thoughts on this story here. So it wasn't just this guy that was saying it. Lil Rod, the former producer, filed the lawsuit and he said every room in Diddy's mansions 
were wired with cameras. And he had some of the footage, he had some of the pictures, and he displayed those in the lawsuit that came out. And this was used for blackmail material. They'd bring in these people. A lot of these people were also aspiring young artists in the music industry. And then these parties were sponsored by Motown Records CEO, Universal Records CEO. This goes all the way to the top. And so you get these people in compromising situations. The drinks were laced. The videotapes were hot. And then at the end of the day, you wake up the next morning. Oh, what did I do? And then they have compromising material on you. And then they can guide your career. They could kill your career. But they got you. And it wasn't just people in the music business. As you said, there were athletes, there were celebrities, there were politicians, people from the royal family. And we were also told by the former bodyguard that Diddy was an FBI informant. Whoa. So he was a snitch and was feeding information to the feds. And we don't know what that means. We haven't been able to confirm it. But even little Rod said it's not just like Epstein. It could be worse than Jeffrey Epstein. Your thoughts. So very interesting that he said that. Now, there was an there was a podcast by the name of Drink Champs. It still exists and it's a it's a pretty good podcast. These guys sit down with people who are in music and they just have long conversations. It's a room filled with like 20 people. Everybody's drinking. They usually have these tactics. <laughs> As I'm saying this, wow, this is really funny. <laughs> they have this tactic of having a really good time and they end up, I don't know if they're trying to, but they end up themselves drinking a lot and the person that they're interviewing ends up drinking a lot and it ends up being really funny. You know, they get the liquid courage. They start telling the truth about a lot of things. So it's very interesting. Now, the reason I'm laughing is because this podcast was picked up by Revolt and Revolt is Diddy's company that he's recently stepped down from. Now, Kanye West was on there. They're trying to get him to drink. Kanye wouldn't drink all that much. This was at the time where he was saying a lot of hateful things. People were saying like Adidas was moving away from him. He was losing a lot of his wealth. Banks were closing down his their, their relationship with him. All sorts of things were happening. Now, they, they did this podcast. Kanye West said that Diddy was a Fed. He said, I know, I know he's a Fed. He was talking about, he's like, he's like, he's fake. He's a Fed. He's like, why don't you tell him about that? Then this podcast that's powered by Revolt, Diddy's company, gets taken down. And this didn't happen recently. This was like a year or two ago. So now a lot of people said, well, Kanye's crazy and he's saying hateful things, and that's why it was taken down. But in reality, in that podcast, he actually said that he is jealous of Jewish people and that he wished that the black community would learn from the Jewish community and operate the same way because he was talking about how, as a community, we don't take care of each other. And the Jewish community does, and I can attest to that. I've seen it. It's incredible to see. It's just, it's, it's just so good to see. It's, it's amazing. That's just my view of it. But that's what he said, although he did say some things where he was pointing out certain people because of their faith. And, you know, you, it, you could frame it as very hateful, the things he was saying. But the one thing that he said that I think got the, the podcast taken down is that Diddy was a Fed. That's what he ended up saying. And that podcast was erased completely. You can still find clips here and there of him talking about it. But it just I'm just saying it links up with what Jesse has heard and Jesse is now confirming he heard from a bodyguard. Did uh, Kanye West was saying the exact same thing years ago. Just find that very, very interesting. I don't know. But I don't know what's going on, man. Let me know in the comment section. Did he celebrating? He must have gotten news, you know, not to compare the two because I got respect for John Gotti. You know, I'm not comparing him to Diddy. But when John Gotti knew that he was going to get off on a case, he would kind of celebrate too. So maybe Diddy's gotten some kind of news where he's like, I'm good. I'm not getting arrested. That's not in the cards. I can just move around business as usual, focus on making music, making money, being with my family, and I'm good. Maybe that's why he was dancing around. I have no idea. But you tell me in the comments section what you think about all this. What do you think about Joe Rogan saying that he heard stories? Who did he hear stories from? I would love to have a sit down with Joe and be like, who told you who who's been saying this to you? Because how many people does Joe know that would be at a party like that? Diddy's usually 
immersed in, you know, he's the one that got coined the phrase black excellence. So he's usually immersed in the black culture. Who does Joe know in the black community that could tell him stories like that? My thoughts right away is Dave Chappelle. That's the only person who could really tell, tell these type of stories. I don't know. Dave and Joe are very close. Dave is kind of close to Diddy, you know, in terms of, you know, meeting with him, talking with him, you know, passing by. I don't know, though. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Subscribe to that second channel. We are breaking away from the Rogan content, covering all sorts of things. Like, subscribe, share, and I'm out.